You are a star in the world, and uh, I press the gratitude. You are a star in the world, and uh, I press the gratitude. Thank you very much. As a career diplomat, when did you see a significant change in India's foreign policy as India rises? Uh, that's a, that's a, you know, it's not an easy one because it wasn't a single, single issue. Uh, you know, 1992 was a very difficult year for us because we were looking at a very major economic crisis. Uh, and many of the reforms that we did then, uh, I think, uh, served us very well. Uh, then I would move to 1998, which was, for years we, we had this, you know, uh, ambivalence. Um, I would actually say the ambivalence was really indecision uh, on becoming a nuclear weapon power. I think it was important that we cross that Rubicon, because today, uh, in many ways, it, it enables us to deal with, you know, competitive forces in a much more uh, confident and uh, assured uh, manner. I would say thereafter, it's been uh, very much more evolutionary. You know, it's, it's hard to say that year there was a decisive change. But all in all, to me, the last 10 years have been important and you know obviously I have a political partiality in making that statement but I would still say why I think those 10 years have been important is at home uh, we are doing the reforms uh, that we should not just the ones we must that you know we're not saying our backs are to the wall so let me do something we are actually doing things looking ahead planning for the future saying you know, if I put a semiconductor industry in place, it means this. If I do logistics, it means this. If I double the number of, you know, universities and colleges, that gives me a better place. Now, these are not changes which are compelled. These are changes which are strategized. And to me, that gives me a lot of hope about what we can do because I can visibly see our domestic capacities increasing. This external is, uh, as the capacities grow and as you know, with, with the change of leadership, I think there's a much greater confidence in actually uh, uh, in, in addressing the world. And I would say this, today, if you go around the world, let's be honest, in most countries, foreign policy is not popular. You know, people don't want to do more. They don't, I mean, uh, when foreign ministers meet, the common topic is how their budgets have shrunk. Okay, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a common gripe of foreign ministers. We have to battle for your budget. Okay, I see the reverse in my country. I mean, there is an appetite to do more with the world. There is a sense of responsibility to the world. You know, if you look, I mean, look at for example our first responder uh, operations. I mean, we could take the view saying we are a three thousand dollar per capita country. So why should I send ships to the uh, Gulf of Aden, you know, or why should I send a responder team to an earthquake in Turkey or whatever, you know, depending on. But there is today, I mean, if I describe to you a sentiment in the country today, in my country today, foreign policy is popular. Dealing more with the world is popular. People feel both an obligation and a sense of pride uh, uh, about that. And that's for me been evolutionary, but you know, it's human nature, every 10 years you kind of look back and say, okay, where are we compared? And I think to me that's been hugely uh, encouraging. Well, Minister, it's a privilege to be with you today. It's been fascinating conversation. Thank you for the audience for your questions, but Mr. Minister, thank you for your answers. You are a star in the world, and uh, I press the gratitude. 
Auf Wiedersehen.